in linear algebra and functional analysis, a projection is a linear transformation p from a vector space to itself such that p2 equals p. That is, whenever p is applied twice to any value, it gives the same result as if it were applied once. It leaves its image unchanged. Though abstract, this definition of projection formalizes and generalizes the idea of graphical projection. One can also consider the effect of a projection on a geometrical object by examining the effect of the projection on points in the object. Simple example. Equals orthogonal projection equals, for example, the function which maps the point in three-dimensional space A3 to the point is an orthogonal projection onto the Zauro Y plane. This function is represented by the matrix. The action of this matrix on an arbitrary vector is to see that P is indeed a projection, that is, P equals P2, we compute. Equals oblique projection equals, a simple example of a non-orthogonal projection is. By a matrix multiplication, one sees that. Proving that P is indeed a projection. The projection P is orthogonal if and only if I plus or minus equals zero. Properties and classification. Let W be a finite dimensional vector space and P be a projection on W. Suppose the subspace is U and V are the range and kernel of P respectively. Then P has the following basic properties, by definition, P is idempotent. P is the identity operator I on U. We have a direct sum W equals U ash V. Every vector X in W may be decomposed uniquely as X equals U plus V with U equals PX and V equals X or PX equals X, and where U is in U and V is in V. The range and kernel of a projection are complementary, as are P and Q equals I or P. The operator Q is also a projection and the range and kernel of P become the kernel and range of Q and vice versa. We say P is a projection along V onto U and Q is a projection along U onto V. In infinite dimensional vector spaces spectrum of a projection is contained in 0, 1, as. Only 0 and 1 can be an eigenvalue of a projection. The corresponding eigenspaces are the kernel and range of the projection. Decomposition of a vector space into direct sums is not unique in general. Therefore, given a subspace V, there may be many projections whose range is V. If a projection is non-trivial it has minimal polynomial x2 or x equals x, x i, which factors into distinct roots, and thus p is diagonalizable. The product of projections is not, in general, a projection, even if they are orthogonal. If projections commute, then their product is a projection. Equals orthogonal projections equals when the vector space W has an inner product and is complete the concept of orthogonality can be used. An orthogonal projection is a projection for which the range U and the null space V are orthogonal subspaces. Thus, for every X and Y in W. Equivalently, a projection is orthogonal if and only if it is self-adjoint. Using the self-adjoint and idempotent properties of P, for any X and Y in W we have PX a U, Y a P Y a V, and where is the inner product associated with W therefore, PX and Y are PY are orthogonal. The other direction, namely that if P is orthogonal then it is self-adjoint, follows from for every X and Y in W. Thus P equals P. Properties in special cases, an orthogonal projection is a bounded operator. This is because for every V in the vector space we have, by Kaukia Euro Schwartz inequality. Thus, for finite dimensional complex or real vector spaces, the standard inner product can be substituted for equals formulas equals, a simple case occurs when the orthogonal projection is onto a line. If U is a unit vector on the line, then the projection is given by the outer product. This operator leaves U invariant, and it annihilates all vectors orthogonal to U, proving that it is indeed the orthogonal projection onto the line containing U. A simple way to see this is to consider an arbitrary vector as the sum of a component on the line and another perpendicular to it. Applying projection, we get by the properties of the dot product of parallel and perpendicular vectors. This formula can be generalized to orthogonal projections on a subspace of arbitrary dimension. Let U1 be an orthonormal basis of the subspace U, 
and let A denote the n by k matrix whose columns are u1. Then the projection is given by, which can be rewritten as, the matrix A T is the partial isometry that vanishes on the orthogonal complement of U and A is the isometry that embeds U into the underlying vector space. The range of P A is therefore the final space of A. It is also clear that all A T is the identity operator on U. The orthonormality condition can also be dropped. If U1 is a basis, and A is the matrix with these vectors as columns, then the projection is. The matrix A still embeds U into the underlying vector space but is no longer an isometry in general. The matrix A1 is a normalizing factor that recovers the norm. For example, the rank 1 operator UUT is not a projection of UA per mil 1. After dividing by U to equals U2, we obtain the projection U, U2, the one that onto the subspace spanned by U. When the range space of the projection is generated by a frame, the formula for the projection takes the form. Here A plus stands for the Maria Euro Penrose suit one verse. This is just one of many ways to construct the projection operator. If a matrix is non-singular and A T B equals zero, the following holds. If the orthogonal condition is enhanced to A T W B equals A T W T B equals zero with W being non-singular, the following holds. All these formulas also hold for complex inner product spaces, provided that the conjugate transpose is used instead of the transpose. Further details on sums of projectors can be found in Banerjee and Roy. Equals oblique projections equals, the term oblique projections is sometimes used to refer to non-orthogonal projections. These projections are also used to represent spatial figures in two-dimensional drawings, though not as frequently as orthogonal projections. Oblique projections are defined by their range and null space. A formula for the matrix representing the projection with a given range and null space can be found as follows. Let the vectors U1 U form a basis for the range of the projection, and assemble these vectors in the n by k matrix A. The range and the null space are complementary spaces, so the null space has dimension n a k. It follows that the orthogonal complement of the null space has dimension k. Let V1 VK form a basis for the orthogonal complement of the null space of the projection, and assemble these vectors in the matrix B. Then the projection is defined by. This expression generalizes the formula for orthogonal projections given above. Canonical forms Any projection P equals P2 on the vector space of dimension D over a field is a diagonalizable matrix, since its minimal polynomial is x2ax which splits into distinct linear factors. Thus there exists a basis in which P has the form. Where R is the rank of P? Here R is the identity matrix of size R, and 0 da R is the zero matrix of size DAR. If the vector space is complex and equipped with an inner product, then there is an orthonormal basis in which the matrix appears. Where I 1 florin a per million I 2 florins a per million. A per million i florin k greater than zero. The integers k, s, m, and the real numbers are uniquely determined. Note the 2k plus s plus m equals d. The factor m hash zeros corresponds to the maximal invariant subspace on which p acts as an orthogonal projection, and the i florin i blocks correspond to the oblique components. Projections on norm vector spaces, when the underlying vector space x is a norm vector space, Analytic questions, irrelevant in the finite dimensional case, need to be considered. Assume now X is a Banach space. Many of the algebraic notions discussed above survive the passage to this context. A given direct sum decomposition of X into complementary subspaces still specifies a projection, and vice versa. If X is the direct sum X equals U ash V, then the operator defined by P, U plus V equals u is still a projection with range u and kernel v. It is also clear that p2 equals p conversely, if p is projection on x, that is p2 equals p, then it is easily verified that 2 equals. In other words, is also a projection. The relation i equals p plus implies x is the direct sum ran, p, ash ran, i a p. However, in contrast to the finite dimensional case, 
projections need not be continuous in general. If a subspace U of X is not closed in the norm topology, then projection onto U is not continuous. In other words, the range of a continuous projection P must be a closed subspace. Furthermore, the kernel of a continuous projection is closed. Thus a continuous projection P gives a decomposition of X into two complementary closed subspaces, X equals RAN, P, ash care, P, equals care, I P, ash care, P. The converse holds also, with an additional assumption. Suppose U is a closed subspace of X. If there exists a closed subspace V such that X equals U ash V, then the projection P with range U and kernel V is continuous. This follows from the closed graph theorem. Suppose Xn Ax and Pxn are Y. One needs to show that Px equals Y. Since U is closed in Pxn ash U, Y lies in U, that is Py equals Y. Also, Xn a Pxn equals Xn Ax a Y. Because V is closed and, I a P, Xn ash V, we have X a Y a V, that is P, X a Y equals px a py equals px a y equals zero, which proves the claim. The above argument makes use of the assumption that both u and v are closed. In general, given a closed subspace u, there need not exist a complementary closed subspace v, although for Hilbert spaces this can always be done by taking the orthogonal complement. For Banach spaces, a one-dimensional subspace always has a closed complementary subspace. This is an immediate consequence of Hanar Euro Banach theorem. Let U be the linear span of U. By Hanar Euro Banach, there exists a bounded linear functional I such that I, U, equals 1. The operator P, X, equals I, X, U satisfies P2 equals P, that is, it is a projection. Boundedness of I implies continuity of P and therefore care, P, equals ran, I a P, is a closed complementary subspace of U. Applications and further considerations, projections play a major role in algorithms for certain linear algebra problems, QR decomposition, singular value decomposition, reduction to Hessenberg form. Linear regression, as stated above, projections are a special case of idempotence. Analytically, orthogonal projections are non-commutative generalizations of characteristic functions. Idempotents are used in classifying, for instance, semisimple algebras, while measure theory begins with considering characteristic functions of measurable sets. Therefore, as one can imagine, projections are very often encountered in the context operator algebras. In particular, a von Neumann algebra is generated by its complete lattice of projections. Generalizations, more generally, Given a map between norm vector spaces one can analogously ask for this map to be an isometry on the orthogonal complement of the kernel, that be an isometry. In particular it must be on U. The case of an orthogonal projection is when W is a subspace of V. In Riemannian geometry, this is used in the definition of a Riemannian submersion. See also, centering matrix, which is an example of a projection matrix. Orthogonalization Invariant subspace, properties of trace, Dijkstra's projection algorithm to compute the projection onto an intersection of sets. Notes. References. Banerjee, Sudipto. Roy, An India, Linear Algebra and Matrix Analysis for Statistics, Texts and Statistical Science, Chapman and Hall CRC, ISBN 978-1420095388. Dunford, N. Schwartz, J. T. Linear Operators, Part 1, General Theory. Into Science. Mayer, Carl D. Matrix Analysis and Applied Linear Algebra. Society for Industrial and Applied Mathematics. ISBN 978-0-89871-454-8. External links. MIT Linear Algebra Lecture on Projection Matrices at Google Video, from MIT Open Courseware, Planar Geometric Projections Tutorial A Euro A Simple to Follow Tutorial Explaining the Different Types of Planar Geometric Projections